Len, having been trained in science, uh, I, I, I think like a scientist, I, 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 I love science. And I always wonder, how far can we push science? Can science give ultimate answers? Because some scientists say yes, in the sense that anything that we can know to be absolutely true has to pass through the crucible of science. Do you believe that? Well, I think there are different um, kinds of truths in our lives. Uh, a scientific theory, strictly speaking, is developed to predict the outcome of, of a certain setup that we observe in nature, like the planets orbiting the star or a certain setup in our lab, a certain experiment. And so a, a scientific theory is really a framework of mathematical equations and rules that we then translate to a certain system. For instance, uh, if I want to uh, tell you what happens when I shoot a billiard ball at another collection of billiard balls, uh, Newton's uh, laws don't directly tell me what happens. I have to take Newton's laws. I have to set up that system mm -hmm. and turn, set up equations that describe that system using Newton's laws and rules. And then I have to grind through the mathematics and predict what happens. And then I match the prediction and I go, oh, if, well, maybe I just need to know for engineering purposes what's going to happen, or maybe I'm testing the theory. And that's what science is. What happens is um, scientists and, and, and also many non-scientists tend to learn about the actual theory, the original framework, and rather than using it in this way to mm -hmm. use predictions, they look at what does it tell us about the nature of the universe, of mm -hmm. us, and you know, they use it philosophically. So they say Newton's laws tell us that determinant that the world is deterministic, that uh, that 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 the state of the universe now, uh, uh, we can, you, that knowing the state of the universe now, we can um, calculate the state of the universe later. Hence, it's determined. Hence, we have no free will. So they make philosophical, mm -hmm. make it into a philosophical issue. And then when quantum theory comes, they go, oh, it's not quite like that. Mm -hmm. And now they've changed their philosophy. But really, for us, we've just changed. We just have another system to describe atoms and, 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 and you know, subatomic particles. But uh, to people who interpret physics theories, they, they see it differently. And, 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 and they, 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 they extrapolate some kind of statement about you know, their existence from it. And, you know, and that, that, that's OK, but it's not really what science is, I mean, strictly speaking, science is there to describe what's happening with physical phenomena. Um, I think where we get into more trouble is where we um, extrapolate that further, and, and, and maybe the, like the scientists you quote who say that all truth comes from science. So if I, what's the truth? Uh, did I enjoy my dinner last night, or was the restaurant just too damn noisy? The science is not going to tell me that, or what do I think of my, of my daughter? Well, maybe or... it can tell you that, because if we knew enough about how your brain worked, and we knew the microcircuitry in, in grand detail, mm -hmm. I can explain how noise uh, affected the, the gustatory experiences of the nerves from your stomach and your tongue and everything going into the centers of your brain, which gives you pleasure. So you have the, you have the afferent information of your tongue to your brain, and then the pleasure center, and then the noise center interrupts that. I mean, I can come up with a reason how science can explain that. Well, you can perhaps look at my brain, and, uh, or had I had an uh, fMRI there, you could, have, you could have watched my brain and said, he's not enjoying it. <laughs> but um, I guess what I'm getting at is, what does that mean to me as a person? Okay. And that's what uh, I, science can't explain. But, you know, I don't know, maybe someday science can, but I don't see any, any, uh, any progress toward that right now. So for my, me in my own life, it can't tell me, you know, when I, you know, what's my feeling of looking at the mountains on a beautiful day or, you know, um, uh, or those kinds of issues. What does a friendship mean? Uh, you, know, you know, maybe science will someday, I don't know, but we can't now. So for me today, science is really tells me about uh, physical issues and a lot about how, the, how my brain works. I'm not saying that. I, I'm a big believer that the brain is a, that all my feelings are, are created in my brain by the physical processes, but still in explaining to me my life, I, I, I don't look at those equations. Well, I, I don't see how they help me. I, I agree today, but, but we're talking in principle uh, forever. I mean, how, in principle, if, you, if science is extended out hundreds, thousands of years in terms of its capabilities, uh, what is off limits? Oh, nothing, should be off, nothing should be off limits, but what, 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 that doesn't mean that science is unlimited. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I would love to get in a time capsule, you know, later on when I'm, you know, when I'm, I'm, I'm frail and ready to die. Just don't die. Get in a time capsule and come back in a thousand years. Yeah. Oh, that's my, that's yeah. my dream. That's, yeah. That, yeah. yeah.
And, and, and what do you think uh, if you would do that? If, where, what, what would science not be able to do at that point? I, I, don't, I, I really don't think I have much Because I would think that, that, uh, that all of your personal things, why you enjoy looking at the mountains and the blue sky and enjoyed your dinner or got interrupted by the noise, I, I think all that would be explained. Well, this, this word why has a, is a very deep word. Um, I can say why right now. It was just too damn noisy. <laughs> um, but then you could say, well, a neuroscientist will say, because that noise causes this to happen in this part of your brain, which maybe um, stimulates uh, some, uh, make, you know, stimulates you too much, and then, you, you know, but it's still not very satisfying to me. So I, it's that other level of the, uh, uh, that, that I'm looking for in my own life. But, but, but is, that, is that a reality, or is that some artificial illusion that you are going through? Because it, it really speaks to what is reality. Mm -hmm. Because if, if, if your sense of reality is forever outside the domain of science, that would characterize that as some independent reality. If you, if, if you would say to me that you thought in principle it would be forever impossible for science to explain your, your human consciousness kinds of feelings, then I would say that the consequence of what you just told me is that your personal experience, call it experience, not consciousness, is something, if it's outside the realm of science, then it right. has I, a, I, I, an independent ontological yeah, and existence. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't believe that. But, but I uh, don't see in the foreseeable future the... Uh, uh, I mean, even if science could explain everything about why I feel that way, I, I'm... I, I'm a hard time seeing how my looking at the equations will be meaningful to me. So, you know, and it will be that truth, that, that, that personal truth to me. Um, so, I don't know. So I'm, I, maybe I'm not being logical. <laughs> Probably not. But to me, um, even having that total explanation of why I feel that way doesn't uh, satisfy me like my inner knowledge of who I am and, and, and um, how I'm feeling.